Baton Rouge for the LSU post game uh, press conference here as LSU defeats Jackson State 83 to 77. Pleased to be joined by head coach Kim Mulkey, graduate guard Kayla Porner, 26 points, nine rebounds, eight assists, and four steals in this evening's game. Graduate guard Jalen Cherry, a season and career high, 24 points, three rebounds, two assists, and two blocks. As always, we've already asked you to silence your phones. If you have a question, raise your hand. We will bring you a wireless mic. Those who are joining us via Zoom as well, you can raise your hand as well on the Zoom. We will try to get to you as fast as we can after some questions in-house. We've already asked uh, Coach Mulkey. She says in lieu of an opening statement, we'll get questions to her in a moment. So we will start with questions for the players, either for Jalen Cherry or for Kayla Pointer. Kayla, um, the, the three-pointer to, to uh, put you guys up, up three there at the end, just talk about that and how much you wanted the ball in your hands down the stretch uh, overall. Um, just stay confident in your game, no matter, you know, the stretch of the game, highs and lows, it's a game of runs. Um, obviously, I work on those shots every single day after practice, shoot before practice. So, you know, ball came around, and I just shot it with confidence and think twice about it. Um, and obviously, I'm happy it went in. Um, yeah. Trust your craft. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, my teammates give me a lot of confidence, and they have faith in me, to, you know, to make – you know, tough shots and, and, and hit tough shots and, you know, set other teammates up. Um, so, really, you know, they gave me the confidence. And, like I said, you just trust trust the craft and trust the work that you put in. Could you give us a sense of what it was like to be down by 10 with less than five minutes to go in a high-stakes game and how you were just feeling and, and the progression towards the end? Yeah, honestly, I, I've said, oh, my God, probably the past – 10 minutes since the horn ended. Um, this team, we just were relentless. Um, grit, you know, we just, we weren't ready to go home. And obviously, you know, we have a team full of seniors as well. So, you know, what is what does those next 10 minutes look like? Are we in the locker room? Are we crying? Are we taking that jersey off for the last time? Or are we celebrating and, you know, getting prepared to play on Monday? So um, a lot of that is going through your mind at that time. And But you just stay confident. You know, a game, you have a lot of time in the game. And the game is not over until that horn sounds. Um, and we just kept going at it, kept going at it, and made a couple. I made a run, and we were able to take the lead, and we just kind of held on to it. Midway through the third quarter, you guys had a 17-point lead. Jackson was able to get some momentum and swing that. What did they do well during that run, and what did you guys do to kind of counter that? Oh, I don't know, 17. Um, <laughs> um, we we stopped doing what got us the lead. Um, we were in the first half, you know, defending really, really well, uh, just forcing them to take tough shots, limiting them to one shots, and then we were running. And then in that third quarter, we got away from doing that. Uh, we were letting them get dribble drives. We were letting them get offensive rebounds, and then we weren't running. So it was literally a switch um, from all the things that got us to lead in the first half. Um, and and Jackson, State, Jackson State is a great team. Uh, we knew it was going to be a dogfight. They're athletic. They have great bigs, great guards. Um, but it's a 40-minute game. You know, they went on their run, and we're like, hey, we still have time. So, you know, we went on our run in the end, and you know, we're able to pull out the W. Yeah, uh, basically what Kayla said, um, they're a good defensive team. They're scrappy, and they're athletic. Uh, <laughs> we were literally hung on the rim during the game. So, <laughs> you know, they, they got offensive rebounds over us, and that's what they did so well in the game. We brought, a, brought a, them back in the game, and um, we went on a little drought. But, you know, we gelled back together, and we, like Coach said, we bowled up. Follow up to that, you guys are the home team. You are the higher seed. How did you think Jackson State kind of played up, maybe exceeded some expectations of a 14 seed? Oh, yeah, they played a great game. Um, obviously, we've been prepping for them all week. Uh, they, I think, what, I don't know what they were, um, their record is, but I think they run 18, 19 in a row. So we knew it was going to be a, t a tough game. Uh, obviously, like I said, they have great players. You know, they're well coached. Um, and they're athletic, and they, you know, they have, they play with a certain swag about themselves. So, you know, we just had to try to match their intensity. Um, and like I said, it, it's, it was a long game, but you know, I'm happy my team was able to pull it out and get the victory. Just wanted to clarify from that question too: the largest lead was 10 points in the fourth quarter, not 17. It was 74, 64, 10 points. What was the largest yeah, lead in the game? game? What was it in the game? In the third. Ours, ours was 17. Yeah. 17. What was it? 17. Mm -hmm. I did not know. Yeah, it was up by a minute. And then they came back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that momentum will get you. 
Uh, uh, last I checked earlier in the uh, fourth quarter, Faustine had seven blocks at one point. Um, what does it feel for like the guards to have a presence like that down low? It's, it's great, honestly. You know, we um, you know, we try not to get beat, but we know that if we do, she's right there to take it out the air, and we love to have a big post presence because she helps, she bails us out a lot. Cause yeah. you know, legs get a little tired, we get beat beat a couple times, but she's always there to take it out the air, and you know, she does it so well. So we're super proud of her and what she's done in this game, and she really was a game changer. This is for Jalen and Kayla. Just obviously, this game tested your composure and your poise. Uh, how good was it to have it right out of the gate? You know, there was a little bit of uh, you guys having a layoff as well to, to kind of get back into the game. Uh, it's March. <laughs> Everybody knows seating doesn't matter. We've seen it on the men's side. We've seen it on the women's side. It's about who wants it the, who wants it the most um, and who's, you know, trying to extend their season. And, you know, the game is survive in advance. Um, like I said earlier, Jackson State is a great team. We knew we were going to have our hands full all night. Um, you know, I, I'm happy we won it, honestly. The game survive in advance. That's all we're trying to do. Yeah. Kayla put it best. There's really no other way to say it, you know, what she said. Seeding, it doesn't matter. You know, every any team can be in beat at any given time. Like, it's, it's March. March Madness, and this is, this is what we're here for. Jalen, I have to ask you right here. Did you feel it in warm-ups? Did you know you were going to shoot that ball tonight? Honestly, no. <laughs> no, I was missing a couple shots in warm-up, but I just I hit my, my first couple shots, and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I don't know. It just the basketball guys were shining down on me and, you know, came to play tonight. Uh, Kayla, where would you rate – this atmosphere that you played in tonight, especially. I mean, they brought their fans. They were loud. I mean, it was it was pretty hype the whole game. Uh, it's Louisiana. Uh, we have the best fans in the world. We believe that. Um, they play a key success, a key part in our success um, throughout the whole year, and they were huge for us today. You know, they, they helped us gain a little momentum. Obviously, we feed off of their energy. Um, everybody knows Louisiana, Louisiana fans are crazy, so I'm, I'm happy that, you know, we're here at home and got the home court advantage. Top two, not two. <laughs> One more question for the players here in the front, and then we'll dismiss them and have questions for Coach Mulkey. Jalen, kind of playing off of that, I saw at one point you had gone, like during a timeout or a dead ball, you had gone over to the fans to get them up. Did you all feel uh, like a palpable difference towards the end of the game uh, during that run to get back into it? Definitely. Uh, like I said before, the the fans are like our literal six man. Like, is there, they're our extra teammate. You know, they. Um, any, every time that we get down, we went down by 10, they were still in, in it with us. They're still cheering up, cheering, LSU, LSU, you know, and that gives us so much energy. So uh, the more they give us energy, the more uh, momentum changed towards us, and we just kept feeding off of them. Kayla and Jalen, thank you all very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. on the win. Thank you. Now we'll take questions for, uh, for Coach Mulkey, please. Yeah, Kim, uh, just after the horn sounded, you were down in your unusual crouch. You just kind of bowed your Say head. For, again, you, 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 were, you were, you were, I'm going to tell my mask off. You were, at, right when the horn ended, you kind of, you were in your catcher's crouch as usual, and you bowed your head for a second and just stayed there. What were you thinking? I'm worn out, tired, worked hard. That was a heck of a ball game. I don't think anybody uh, turned the TV off. I don't think any fan for either team left. And, um, I was tired. It's like, it's over. That's all I was thinking. T and Jackson, what did you uh, tell Coach Reed after the game? Y'all kind of embraced and talked for a long time. What, what did you share with her in that moment after the game? I told her that uh, I got a dose of her team last year when I was at Baylor and how much I respect the job she's done and that she's a heck of a coach and that her kids played their hearts out. And um, I don't know if you want me to tell you the second part of that because y'all all Jackson State people, but I said, you ain't going to be at Jackson State long if they don't pay you. <laughs> And I'm not her agent. I'm not her best friend. 
I just know talent and I, I respect people from afar on job well done. I'm just wondering if there ever was a message to your team to match their toughness and intensity. Say that again. Did you ever have to challenge your team to match their toughness and intensity? Yeah. Uh, I just told them they're manhandling you. Uh, I told them that their uh, will to win in that moment was far greater. And lastly, this game's not over. Hey, Coach, you talked a little bit about your familiarity with Coach Reed. What do you think was the biggest difference from playing her last year to playing her this year? Well, it's two different teams now. I just left a team at Baylor that can go to a Final Four, and they got the same team from last year, basically. This team won nine games last year, so I can't compare Baylor's team to this team playing Jackson State. What I can tell you is she has three returning starters at Jackson State, and those kids, there's no substitute for experience. They've been in those one versus 16 or two 15 games, and that experience just makes you more confident. And uh, I think her personality from what little I've watched um, on film and things is that she, she has those kids playing hard and believing and um, has some transfers in there like we all do. Uh, and a lot of them getting chances to play that maybe weren't playing at other places. Uh, but just she's got, she's got a lot of um, uh, uh, good players. What was your expectation coming in facing Jackson State? You watched your film, you did your scout. Did you expect it to come down to the wire and be this close? I don't know that I ever just sit and say, oh, we're going to blow somebody out, or oh, it's going to be a close game. I think all we do is we just sit there and we write down tendencies, what they do well, what we need to do, matchups, who needs to guard who, what we need to run offensively. I don't know that I ever, ever would ever disrespect anybody that I play to think, oh, this is going to be a close game, not a close game. We're just focusing on what we have to do to try to win. When it was a 10-point deficit, Coach, is that what you, you – you touched on it just a while ago, but was that – what did you tell them and what was the feeling at that point? I think it was four minutes and something to go in the game. I said, the game's not over. I said, now we're, we're – in a bon they're in a bonus. We've, you know, got the foul. So if you foul, they're going to the free throw line. I said, but we've we've got to change the the momentum here. We've got to we got to pick it up in a full court. And we went to full court pressing. We haven't had to do that much this year. And you know, guys, even if we had lost that game, the kids never stopped playing hard. They just, you know, they 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 just kept playing hard. And 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 we happened to get some steals and change the momentum there. Think about this game. You had te two technicals. Right? Coach got a technical for them. We got a, t a delay of game technical. Um, you had big, big momentum swings in the game. Um, it, it was a game that you got to see a team. Jackson State, I'd have to look at, y'all may can help me, those of you who follow them, eight threes is not the norm for them. They average, I think, four a game. So let's talk about why they got back in the game that you asked the kids this the truth of the matter they got back in the game because they unexpectedly made threes that we didn't not that we didn't prepare for it but it's not usual so that got them back in the game dribble penetration ducking your head when you're down what it what would you say 17 double you have nothing to lose so you just duck your head and you go make something happen and i thought their guards did that um, but I, I thought, um, too, Crump, is that her name, Crump? She did some pretty darn good special stuff out there for them today. They started six of six from three and a half. Yeah, 80% at one point. I turned around to my coaches and I said, I thought y'all told me they couldn't shoot threes. <laughs> Coach, they're shooting 80% from the three. Coach. But that's why it's called March Madness. It's wonderful. Coach, just um, going back to that five-minute mark and just throughout that five-minute stretch, just what did you see from the experience of your team and how they stayed together just on their own? My intensity sometimes when, I, when I'm coaching, I, I have to be careful because what motivated me as a player sometimes doesn't motivate kids. 
So they may take it as um, not being positive. Like I may say something like, I, I, I'll, I'll give this example, nothing in particular today, but if a coach told me she's kicking your butt and I'm under my breath saying, watch me, I may not can say that to these kids. Do you understand? They just won their very first game in an NCAA tournament. These kids right here, the senior group. So that's important, and we don't need to forget that, is they won. And they're experienced something today and tonight and tomorrow and the next game that they've never experienced in their life. And I will tell you, the fans were unbelievable. They stood, they cheered. Um, everybody in this arena got a good basketball game to watch. Uh, and, and, and wasn't it neat? You knew the Tigers were going to win, right? <laughs> right? Some Tigers were going to win. They were either going to be in that navy and blue, uh, red, or they were going to be in that purple and gold. So it was just, it was good. And, and the familiarity, guys, think about this. How long does it take to get to Jackson, Mississippi, up I-55? Two and a half hours? That's exciting. That's exciting. People know Jackson State University. They know about LSU. LSU, how about Cherry? Where do you think that kid's from? Gulfport, Mississippi. Not Mississippi, it's Mississippi. Okay? We're a regional area, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, okay? We're proud people. And you saw some kids out there and some coaches out there competing. We have time for two, uh, time for right here. The gentleman in the back, Jacques Dusset, will be our last question for Coach Mulkey. Oh. It, it looked like as you first, first um, uh, right after the game, it looked like you said, I don't know how we won as you first embraced uh, Jackson State coach right afterwards? I, I could <laughs> have. I could have said. I say a lot of things yeah. to make coaches in defeat feel better. But um, the point, okay? yeah. Okay, <laughs> I wish more coaches would do that. Because really, you had what? She had a 10-point lead with how much time left to go in the game. I don't know how we made that up other than we started pressing. I'm not going to go down there and say, oh, it was my great coaching. You're going to go down there and you're going you're gonna to have some compassion. Uh, I, I go down there sometimes and I'll say, look, you didn't lose. The clock just ran out. So what was your question? Oh, well, <laughs> the point being whether if you did say that, that just kind of encapsulated how wild you felt the end of that game was and, and it, what a steep climb you guys had in the end. I don't know wild would be a description because I don't think we were out of control at all. I don't think either team played out of control. I think both teams played hard and had different spurts in the game. I just thought ours was a sense of urgency and man, we got to get after it right here. Time's running out. So, yeah. Go ahead. I'm if you, if you can correct me if I misquote you, but I know earlier in the week you were saying you don't want them to be too high. You don't want them to be too low. You want them to be level-headed. This game right here was exactly what you said. I want to know what was said to them before they went out and um, what did you do to make sure they kept a level head throughout this game? Well, I don't, I'm not one of these coaches that plans these pregame speeches. What goes, comes out of my mouth before a game is mainly remind them of what we're trying to do. Go over on the board everything you may see, two, three, three, two, 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 one. Remember everything we've gone over and uh, ways to win the game, and we go play. A lot of what I tell them is through the course of the game during a timeout, and that can be a lot of stuff. Don't sit close to my bench, okay? It could be a lot of stuff. Last question, Jacques. Okay. Uh, Coach, you obviously have a good rapport with Coach Reed, and it's March Madness, and it's fun and all that, but um, there was a video that came out when they got into the tournament. Kim olkey has got to come in and all that. It was a close game, but uh, – I heard that got back to you. <laughs> Y'all see it? Who saw that video? I did see it. I didn't see it because I'm on social media, Jock. I saw it because people send it to me, and it was bulletin board material. Okay. So what is your question? You want to know what my reaction to it was? Y'all know I like to sing. Right? So when I saw it, because it was my name, I said, 
Reminded me of that song Jim Croce used to sing. You know, Croce was killed in a plane crash in Natchitoches in the 70s, for those of you who are too young to know who he was. And he had a little song, and it goes like this. You don't tug on Superman's cape. You don't spit in the wind. You don't pull the mask off the old long range, and you don't mess around with Kim. <laughs> that was my first thought. But you see, a lot of the young people, they don't know that song. So my thought is this. Y'all know who Destiny's Child is? Say my name, say my name, say my name. Y'all have a good day. Love y'all. We good? Thank you, Coach. We'll have Jackson State in here shortly. Once again, LSU will have a press conference tomorrow afternoon at 145. Ohio State's press conference will be at 2.15. We'll be back with Jackson State in just a moment. A recording of this press conference available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub, ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts will be provided shortly by ASAP. We'll be right back with Jackson State.